Only smart people understand the Oppenheimer movie. People that dislike this film don't possess the brain power to comprehend its magnitude. Hey guy, I just wanted to let you know people can have opinions. Like, my opinion is that you suck, and you're a dumbass. The ultimate intellectual INTJ feels like this. Only he is right, guys. He is the chosen one. How it feels to be an INTJ. Are we really, like, basing things off of Myers-Briggs still in the Lord's year of 2024? Is that something we're going to continuously be doing? I'd prefer not. Why are AP courses so easy for me? Is it just me or is AP easy? Basically the title. Last year I took my first AP class as a sophomore, AP Euro. It was ridiculously easy. I never did the readings required apart from spending 10 minutes the night before going over the material needed for an in-class essay. I ended up passing the exam. This year I'm in bio, A push lang and comp sci. None of these classes are difficult in any way, and I spend maybe an hour a week on homework and studying. Is it just the way my school's way of teaching is structured, or are these classes indeed just easy? Notice passed and not earned highest score. Hot and brilliant. I may look a certain way, but my mom was a former PhD professor, my family full of doctors and teachers and philanthropists. I am educated and articulate, and don't let my body fool you. I will write a 40-page dissertation and cite every source, MLA, APA, or Turabian. I don't know what Turabian is. I probably butchered that. I went to college at 15. This sexy stuff is an act, y'all. Wow. Least interesting person of all time, I think. Poor I user writes 1,000 plus word rambling monologue about why people with 140 IQ are superior to people with 135 IQ. Here's the funniest section of it. My own experience is I have a lot of extra information coming at me in comparison to peers and coworkers both internally and externally. When someone says something, my brain acts like a search engine and dredges up everything I've ever read or heard on the topic. I have music playing in my head with 21 instruments and I can hear each one. I see lines, shapes, and shadows when looking at the world and can recreate them from memory in many formats, digitally, traditionally, verbally, etc. After a full day of working at this pace, sound and vision can be painful and I have to turn off the word part of my brain or it might rupture come out of my nose and ears. Sound and vision hurt. I am the employee that employers want kept in flow state 24 seven so I can access and use all that stored info productively. A lot of the new school policies on think groups in business are to try to get the 135ers to function in the same way, to unlock their potential productivity. I tend to think you can't make that car run like if it was built to run like that. My talent is a good memory and the ability to process information faster than others. I was tested multiple times throughout school because I was failing to perform at the standards that the magic number said I should, so they kept thinking there must be some mistake. I am like an odd beetle on a pin. You are like if a rock was a person. You were like if talking to a yak? No, no, say a water buffalo who just painted a wall and watched it dry was a person. New copy pasta? I would like to say that I empathize with the uh, and understand your frustrations, however, You've clearly demonstrated that you have too little brain matter to fully understand the cultural impact of the Reddit community, and I find it impossible to empathize with smooth brains. Adding on to that, you are also misrepresenting the Reddit community. I would suggest that you educate yourself on this topic. However, you seem to lack the fundamental elementary principles to even educate yourself about the basics of the Reddit community. I don't think it would be too much of a logical stretch to assume that you have a sub 100 IQ based on what you've said so far. That was insufferable. Could you imagine what this person is like in real life? I couldn't. Hell no. Hell no. Hell, hell no. I crave randomness in a world full of predictable humans. All right, I'm going to do another another voice for this one. <clears throat> Maybe a little bit more feminine. Maybe a little bit higher pitched. Let's try it. You'd be surprised when they will have a job for him and get him to revile his methods so loopholes can be patched. People on the spectrum like myself are highly intelligent and in a variety of different ways. I can remember anything that interests me or was of note from 30 years ago as a young child in vivid detail that I can recite back to anyone. I have never used my photographic memory to study maths and English as that doesn't simulate me at all. People's behavior, mannerisms, and therefore a lack of an understanding of basic things interest me and I can and have use things against people to get my own way in a lot of different situations. I've even told people that I can manipulate any given situation to my advantage, but I'll be honest, it gets kind of boring getting your way all the time. I crave randomness in a world full of predictable humans. I can tell you what someone will do or say before they even do it. From a simple two minute conversation, I try to let people prove me wrong, but 
that rarely happens at all as most people revert back to the type as it's their safety blanket and all they will ever know is this the copy pasta lamau i don't know but if, i hope it is because that's funny not paying attention in class but spend nights and weekends trying to disprove einstein relativity theories very smart what are the best study methods at high school, I routinely scored over 95% of most subjects at a highly competitive private school. I was at the top of my class for every subject I took one time or another. Often most of my subjects most of the time. All the while barely paying attention in class and not doing my homework, I had a lot of piano practice to do. I was aiming to be a professional pianist, so ain't nobody got time for that. What I did do though was spent hours every night, weekend, and often during class time trying to prove everything I was taught was wrong. When we were taught relativity, for example, I spent literally hundreds of hours tearing apart the equations to find out where Einstein got it wrong or trying to devise alternate explanations or when we were doing electricity and magnetism, I spent hours designing an earth-sized electrical generator, figuring out how much copper would be required to generate enough electricity for the whole world. How fast do we need to rotate? How to get the electricity back to the ground, etc. For biology, I wrote short novels based on fantasy worlds, where I described in great detail the ecosystems and drew animals and described their biology and evolution. I invented a new model for light, neither wave nor particle, when we were learning about that. I invented a new language and alphabet, was a massive Tolkien fan, etc, etc. I've probably said this three times already, but every single person who posts about how smart they are, are insufferable. Proof by intuition. My intuition is always right, otherwise it wouldn't be intuition. Qued. Seems pretty obvious to me. I was finding Taylor series for functions before I even took the proper calculus course. It's just a simple logical deduction. I hate that people always say this isn't intuitive at all. Yet it always literally is intuitive and obvious. I love when a professor tries to make a point how unintuitive something is and how non-obvious it is by asking the class to answer, expecting totally wrong answers. Then I answer and ruin his fun by getting it right immediately, despite me never having seen this prior. Usually I just stay quiet though and never say a word in class whilst getting 98% plus on all exams. I know I am inferior. I should be getting 100% on everything, but I fail at this and thus fail myself. In the entirety of my double major in mathematics and physics, I didn't run into a single thing that was unintuitive. My intuition is always right. If this wasn't the case, then it wouldn't be intuition. This is a non-rigorous proof that most mathematicians don't understand what intuition is. <clears throat> Fourier transforms and Fourier series are not more advanced. It is literally just calculus one material. I went to college thinking I would be around smart people. Turns out I was the only one that self-taught myself calculus before taking the course and everyone else was an absolute oaf that struggled. I was literally coming up with Taylor series on my own in Calc 1, and it is utterly obvious and 100% intuitive. So I'm sick and tired of people saying the super obvious stuff is not intuitive. I also came up with the Fourier series. It is also utterly obvious. In fact, you can literally create any function with any arbitrary functions, provided you can choose the coefficients of those arbitrary functions and have an infinite amount of them. On a video essay by a British guy, you preserverate. Far beyond what is helpful to your audience, which with your accent, one that would have been identified as strongly slash traditionally English even a century ago, and let's not forget all of its offshore variants, or any English accent sounding more antiquated than most postmodern average, while not being a learned English accent comes across as dry, boring, condescending, full of pomp and lacking in enlightenment, except of the type of faux enlightening that can be found here and all over the mainstream web in any language and I suspect any accent. The only real difference between hearing it in this language English and with your accent is that no matter how proper you speak or what words you do speak properly, your focus on speech over substance is merely training the listener's journey towards true education for instead a hopeless quest of understanding. In time, they will see it for what it is, which is that. They are or have been listening to a cheap auditory ear massaging that lacked the substance of thought and depth of personal advancement expected prior to engaging in such a journey and has rather their time and even money wasted, coupled with a vast feeling of usury and crushing insult knowing that they, the consumer, has been drained deeply of their precious time, and then what remains wholly wasted by the snake oil salesman who deals in childish linguistics. His appearance then becomes the likes of which not Shakespeare himself would see fit for a good mocking. Are you real? That's what I'm saying. Are, are these people real? Or are these just like chat GPT chat bots? Just making up, I found the final boss. A guy who once randomly friend requested me on Facebook. Oh my God, long ass sentence, okay. <clears throat> The application at the engineering firm has been rejected. It was nay due to lack the prerequisite qualifications, if you can call them that, as I almost border on being overqualified to these fragments. They are merely fortunate enough that they have been endowed with a buyer's market by the current labor market conditions, which are, let's say, less than desired at the moment. Under better circumstances, I wouldn't even know these pitiful excuses of engineers even existed. But heed this. 
The rejection, the awfully misguided rejection, had nothing to do with competency. It was rather, more regrettably, if I might add, attributed to credibility issues with my claim of possessing aptitude of quasi-omniscience, AQO. Now, if I only had a penny, I'd have to take liberties when the occasion calls for you describing my faculties. And it's not only the faculties themselves, mind you, in addition to said faculties, there are compounding complexities of heronermatic frameworks. These are cognitive systems which interpenetrate a multitude of ontological realms, which all breathe life into the very milieu that is my dear AQO. One is, of course, meat space. The other, well, that assumes a lot of prior knowledge of the metaphysics. Hint, Plato's analogy of the sun is a good endpoint, but begin with the cave. What are you talking about? So what is it to be expected, dear reader? How do I characterize these interlacing labyrinths of intellectual hardware and software to the intellectually average? Well, you don't. I might as well be stuttering in a defunct indigenous language of the Brazilian rainforest Google translated to Klingon after a stroke. Thus, for the sake of succinities, but more importantly, and quite frankly, or selflessly, never said I don't care about people, being fathomable to the common man, it's not in my interest to perplex, never was, I have to resort to similes, which populate the pool of fodder for the two greater analogies, and from there, the allegory is conceived, there is nothing more beautiful. Now, you might ask, what could this possibly be? It's a library. No, the, the library. While these underlying mechanisms of intricate cognigating processes work on the magic behind the scenes of a library materializes in the front of my eyes, and it might as well be as vivid as my keyboard is at this very moment. Just like how Jesus imbued his teachings through parables. I go to a library to acquire knowledge no mortal could possibly know. An adequate comparison, if I say so myself. This subreddit pisses me off so bad. Mostly because I don't know what half of these words mean. <laughs> his IQ is over 140 and he is a physics major. Number one, if anyone in the convo is stupid, it's you, not me. I'm a physics major and 140 plus IQ. Number two, you look almost as white as me, meaning you barely have any Aztec DNA. Number three, there is scant to no evidence of having any accurate or developed science, medicine, or math whatsoever. If you claim otherwise, you're lying to feed some personal bias towards equality that you have. Shut up, white boy. I would doubt my memory too if I was this person, not gonna lie. It's very hard for people to doubt their own vivid memory. I have took the following approach to my own memory when I was about 19 years old and once again foolishly followed my hopes of developing a pedagogy. I don't know what that word means. That doesn't waste as much time from the children as the current one. In this ever-changing world, memories are overrated. You might remember how your demolished childhood home was, but it's useless in a map for the present. You might remember your school friends that you're no longer in touch with, but they're probably different now. Embracing this relinquishing of memory improved my life because I began to realize that some problems arise because people can't understand what the world has changed and get stuck in their memories. Well, I'm always continuously scanning reality again and again to find current facts. How much storage space do I have, I wondered back then. I had no idea, but since it's limited, I've decided to use it for storing eternal truths, mathematics, and long-lasting battle-tested conjectures, physics, and chemistry. This should have more than nine downvotes. This guy's a loser. Self-proclaimed non-normie. Being an introverted thinking dominant type is seriously one of the most painful things ever. I really can't stand other people. I honestly am flabbergasted at the irrationality and stupidity of normies that I witness every day. Now, being an ISTP, I am able to adapt well in the normie world and even come across as one of them. I'm in shape, dress well, I have an education, a job, decent social skills, and don't take things too seriously in situations with people to come across as more likable. I believe I am a healthy ISTP with mastery on my FE, etc. All things that normies say are good for you, even though they don't understand why. However, I cannot wrap my head at the lack of critical thought people put into decisions they make, why they think the way they do, why they have crazy opinions that they have, etc. It drives me crazy when, from my perspective, I'm the only one who's put any level of thought into anything. Okay, brother. Sure. I'll let you believe that. We'll, we'll all let you believe in your little non-normie world. No one who uses the word normie is, is uh, not a normie. You know what I mean? Like, if you call people normies, you're also a normie. You're you're weird. You're weirdo. This guy thinks he's above all other chess players. Oh my god, what is with this background? I don't even want to read this. I must express my disappointment with the chess puzzle in question. Despite its initial allure, it proved to be disappointingly facile. The queen's sacrifice is obvious. Lacking the intricate complexities and strategic depth that one would expect from a truly challenging puzzle, the underpromotion was too in your face. Its predictability was apparent from the outset leaving no room for the nuanced decision-making and creative maneuvers that make chess puzzles truly engaging. As an ardent chess enthusiast, I relish the opportunity to grapple with puzzles that demand a higher level of intellectual acumen. On this festive occasion of Christmas Eve, it would have been particularly delightful to encounter a puzzle that not only captured the spirit of the season, but also provided a stimulating mental workout. Alas, this puzzle has fallen short, 
requiring my constructive criticism. Now I must survive unreasonable down votes from chess players who, while skilled, perhaps would only manage to stalemate me back when I was 12 and avoid overly censorious moderators. Who formats this picture like this and thinks, yeah, that's good. Poor you, you high IQ person. Will low slash average IQ people ever realize that a high IQ is not a fun thing to have? Oh, and then he deleted it, probably because he got bullied out of existence deservingly. I do not condone bullying in most senses. My favorite thing to do is bully self-righteous people who think they are better than everyone else. Those people deserve to get bullied. This guy is putting himself forward as president of Iceland. Book overview. In a world where the unseen dictates the scene, this compelling narrative delves into the depths of social engineering and its occult underpinnings. Drawing from ancient manuscripts shrouded in mystery, it reveals a tapestry of hidden influences that have shaped history and continue to mold our present and future. The book meticulously unravels the complex interplay of mythological grandeur and futuristic technology, offering an unprecedented exploration of the power structures that govern societies from the shadows. It's a journey that takes the reader through the corridors of secret societies, unearthing their strategies of control and influence that transcend time and borders. Through a blend of mythical storytelling and factual analysis, the author skillfully navigates the murky waters of political manipulation, demonstrating how public perception is crafted and swayed by a few. With each chapter, the veil is lifted a little higher, exposing the intricate web of deceit and power play that lies beneath the surface of societal norms and conventions. This book is not just a recount of historical events, it is a revelation of the continuous struggle for power played out through the ages. It deciphers the enigmatic language of the ruling elites, unveiling their cryptic symbols and rituals. The narrative is woven with a sense of urgency and insight, urging the reader to look beyond the obvious and question the narratives fed by mainstream channels. A lot of big words for someone who maybe didn't even read the book. Who knows? In response to someone criticizing an AI-generated image in a chess article, I don't think the point was to have an exact number of rows between the material. The wobbling bicycle was. I prefer a point made, evocated, explicited, than an obscured wall of exact truth I can't see. The reasoning or purpose towards something else, see, I even went from a punchline here to an unreadable, more nuanced statement via editing myself in self-criticism or non-exactitude with respect to my average thinking. Original statement was, I prefer a point made to a truth I can't see. Now compare the two. Yet, I think the improvement formula is a bit abrupt. But I guess there are concerns I do not share or understand about what those blog are doing on the front page of Lichess. Lichess. Lichess? I don't know. Best is to be chirurgical. Churigur, churgical, I don't know. Find the relevant and be generous to the less relevant pass, if not obstructing the view too much. So thanks for bringing that point of not expecting chess learning is just a robotic application of some external, prefabricated complete knowledge that is required before doing anything or thinking anything. It is an element to consider in finally thinking about theories of learning in chess. Whether coming from a titled author or not, it can be chewed without having oneself a title as long as not arguing by title implicitly or not. Defending his position that he can't be racist on the internet because it's just pixels. I'm not racist. I'm intelligent. You're woke. There's a difference. This isn't a Twitch chat. This guy's got Twitch Prime. Speaking of, if you have Twitch Prime, go over to twitch.tv slash says Mason and go use your Prime. If you don't have it used already, of course. Selfless plug, shameless plug. Uh, you know, that's just kind of how I be.